Okay, welcome again to Air Job Boss TV. I am the Air Job Boss, and today we are going to continue our interview answer, no, question and answer series. And today's question is, tell me about a time you had to deal with extreme stress. Okay, now, here's the answer. I dealt, I had extreme stress, and what I did to co cope with that is better understand the stress visualize a positive outcome and set a plan in which I work through and, and focused more on accomplishing tasks than actually what was going wrong. Okay, for example, an engine blows up in flight, portions of it pierce the cabin, causing a rapid depressurization, also hits the airspeed indicator, so I have unreliable airspeed. I have the stick shaker going off on one hand, and an airspeed exceeding mock a VMO or, or MMO a mock warning sound. And I'm in IMC conditions. You don't crumble and not, not do anything right. So what I did was exact identified exactly what was wrong and I prioritized what situation I wanted to cure first. I have a depressurization, I need to descend. So I began an emer I declared an emergency made an emergency descent, decided to limit my speed because of structural damage. And when I was established, I moved on to the next task, which was securing the engine. Yeah, these kind of things. So that's the overall theme of it. Now, I would suggest this is framed in the simulator because this is the function of the simulator. If you've used watched my other videos, you understand that proper simulator instruction should put you under pressure and stress so that you can practice responding rationally to extremely stressful situations. Yeah. So it's natural that you just draw upon a scenario in the sim that was extremely stressful. You can come up with that story. Now, secondly, you can come up with Initial training. Sometimes initial training at some companies can be extremely stressful or relatively extremely stressful. And you could, you could parse this at the beginning saying, well, extreme stress, I would not categorize as something I've really experienced, but high levels of stress during initial training, yes, and I have a story. I was starting initial training at this airline. And there was a lot of information. The aircraft was very different. The company culture was new to me. The operations manual I'd never understood before. There was regulation differences. And this was a lot of information. What I decided to do was separate sections that I could study and I could memorize and I can articulate one by one and employed help from other people and got together in work groups and communicated with my instructors and set up a system to monitor my progress. And this is how I did the stress thing, right? This is how you cope with high levels of stress. So you can do it in the simulator, initial training, airline business trouble. For example, my company was in bankruptcy. They were laying off people. They were canceling routes. They were the maintenance was relatively not as good as it used to be. Our fuel carry was lower because they were trying to save fuel. There were fewer passengers. There was more passengers. I don't know. But generally, troubles with your company require your focus back to your job, right? Although people were upset because the airline was having union negotiation problems. They were going bankrupt. People were wanting to strike. It was very chaotic in the workplace. The company culture was very fractured. But what I did was focused on my day-to-day -day operations, rely on compliance with my SOP, the company policy, and the regulations so that even though I was feeling a lot of stress, if I separated myself once I was in the airplane from that stress and focused on something else, I found I could maintain high levels of efficiency, safety, and customer service besides what was going on in the outside world. Okay, so company business trouble. You can find a story maybe of this. Natural disasters. At times when there's natural disasters, and I had the same problem. I was working in Japan when their 
they suffered a very large earthquake that re that uh, resulted as well in a very large tsunami that killed several thousand people. It also caused a nuclear power plant, uh, its cooling process to be stymied and the power plant overheated and actually exploded uh, and actually began leaking some of the uh, radioactive material. And the whole entire country was in a state of extreme stress, trying to recover people, save people, find housing for people, identify people, mitigate radiation problems, make sure the buildings that were still standing were, were safe, all kinds of things. And the airline, people stopped flying, but still people needed to be moved around because emergency personnel needed to be moved around. People had to move, but generally the, com the country was about 50% on standstill. This were this, this caused, and some of the pilots didn't come back into the country to actually staff the airline. And foreign airlines stopped flying and carrying our foreign pa pa pilots back into the country so that they could work. So a lot of us uh, volunteered to work overtime. So you can draw upon that, a natural disaster that is affected and how you basically decided, I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to consider myself a volunteer and I'm going to put away compensation, work preferences, scheduling preferences, and I'm going to dedicate myself to helping this airline and the people of this country first. And then we're going to get to get all this solved first and get, get this problem solved uh, and help people. And by helping people that reduced my stress because I didn't feel like a victim anymore. I began to feel like a hero. And, and, and part of the solution. Okay, so maybe call upon that. Also, family tragedies. Family tragedies are so upsetting. If you, if you, um, if you eat, actually, things that go well too, if you have a birth of a child, but you're away, this causes stress. Everyone pretty much needs you there and you're not there. Your absenteeism causes internal stress because you know other people that rely on you are without you right now and you're quote unquote, letting them down a little bit. A death in your family, if it's a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, or otherwise a spouse, this causes extreme stress. So that, that family tragedy, uh, somebody even being near death, um, uh, an automobile accident or some sort of, of uh, disease or surgery can cause stress, right? In family tragedies or circumstances that are really emotional, one of the main ways I recommend you deal with this, and you can cross-check me, and in the comments section, you, see, you can participate and, and, and tell me if I'm right or wrong. You need to take yourself out of the work environment. You probably have enough distraction based on a close family tragedy that you are not 100% safe at work. It's likely that you're too distracted and another person who is not feeling this type of stress and this type of tragedy could take your place and become a more efficient, a safer pilot. Would you not agree? So there are going to be times in your career as a professional, you have to take yourself out of the game. You have to put yourself on the sideline, take a week off, take two weeks off, whatever it takes to mitigate that stress, that family tragedy, and repair that back and get yourself in a place where you can be productive and useful to your company. But you have to be professional enough to recognize there are times when you are experiencing such high levels of stress that you need to take a time out. You need to pass the responsibility on to another person who is more capable of you at that time. Keeping in mind, that sometimes your coworkers will be under an extreme amount of stress from their problems, and it might be a good time to volunteer to take their duty for them. Yeah? That's a two-way street of balancing true member of a family and true member of a, a group of people trying to work together, and a company on a, on a singular mission is to cooperate with them, collaborate, and relieve the stress of the people around you. So it's it, it's... It's natural that you must think that it's okay for you to step aside and let somebody else carry that torch, do that job, uh, and take on your responsibility during that time of stress. So it's okay to describe this situation. 
It shows a high degree of responsibility. And an airline that you truly want to work for, if you articulate this well, they will respect you for it and they will hire you. So don't worry about telling them, I had to take some time off to deal with this stress. Divorce, serious distraction can cause you to be entirely distracted and unsafe at work. If you need time off, you take time off. And that is one of the main reasons how airline pilots responsibly deal with extreme stress. All right. Leave a comment, please, on this one. I would really be curious to hear what you think about that. Also, please share out my videos. Subscribe. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. Anyway, thank you so much from Airjob Boss TV.